Hey folks, uh, we just had uh, the the uh, volatility markets, the volatility futures just open up. We're going into tomorrow. It's going to be triple witching. So uh, at current, uh, we're seeing volatility catch a bid as we proceed into the new trading day. I have Tesla up top. Tesla is trading like tick for tick inverse of volatility. NASDAQ futures just opened up. Uh, they're rolling over with volatility spiking. Uh, Tesla now has a 170 handle and is probably going lower. So what we're going to be talking about tonight is what the hell is going on and what's driving this market at current. And for the most part, it's, um, wow, Tesla's getting whacked. Uh, Tesla closed out the session at 172.92. Now it's down to 170.63. Volatility firmly above a 20 handle now. Let's take a look at uh, volatility on a intraday time frame. Volatility is one of the strongest days today I've seen in a very long time. And it's still looking strong. Okay, so we'll check back in from time to time. Again, tomorrow is tri triple witching. That's basically uh, a bunch of options on futures, options on options, uh, all expiring at the same time. A ton of volatility out there. Uh, we're going to stick with the topic of volatility for a moment because the action in the uh, – banking sector was very concerning, but with that concern comes opportunity. Now, what you're looking at here is here at the Contrarian Trader, what we like to do is we like to sell premium, meaning we like to sell options, not buy them per se. We have bought them. We do own them. But by and large, we like to sell premium to generate cash flow. There hasn't been much to do, but I'm telling you right now, I'm looking at my list of uh, high volatility stocks, and I don't remember the last time I saw so many banks littering the top of this list. I mean, Signature Bank Corp. I went over this with members last night on Market Rack, uh, symbol SBNY. This has got exposure to Silvergate. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, options, IV percentile at 100. So that means it's the highest IV percentile of the year. Uh, Schwab, Schwab, for whatever reason, is up there. Uh, JP Morgan, uh, Fifth Third Bank. These are some big banks. Key Corp, M&T Bank. U.S. Bank Corp. Something Wells Fargo, something very, very wrong is going on in the banking sector. And it could, should concern everyone. I'm really surprised BlackRock is not on here. Interesting. Okay, let's say hello to people. Mr. Pete. Hello, Pete. Uh, is it too late to buy SDAO and SOXS? We'll take a look at those when we go to market wrap. 
Uh, Sean, hello, sir. Uh, congrats on that. No, 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 no. After uh, you, you, you better hope not, because there's there's not going to be any government bailouts. There'll be bail-ins, uh, meaning if you're with a, a bank right now, after the financial crisis of which I traded in, uh, after the financial crisis, the uh, Dodd Frank, the two guys who caused the financial crisis, Senator Dodd and uh, Congressman Frank, uh, they wrote the legislation to fix it so it would never, they caused it and they write the legislation to fix it. So uh, there'll be bail ins. Make sure that you do not have any more than $250,000 in cash in any one SD, SDIC insured institution. Because if you do, uh, there will be a bail in if that bank is, is on, in trouble and they need to take your money to help pay off the bondholders. So be careful. Be very, very careful with whom you bank nowadays. So a lot of opportunity here appearing in um, in the banks in terms of selling premium. Now, uh, I would stay very small with the signature bank, but JP Morgan, I would get pretty big with, and we're going to be looking at doing that trade tomorrow. So more to come. Hey, Tim. Sam, hello. Uh, Corey, what Amazon puts today up? Congratulations, my friend. Uh, yeah, I, I, I haven't looked at Bitcoin. I just did it before we went live. Yeah, it hammered. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, let's check back in with the futures. All right, so volatility coming in a little bit, a wee bit. Tesla hit 170 after closing at 172.92. NASDAQ futures down a third. Franklin, hey, sir. So let's do this. Okay. All right. Um, let's get to it. So, what's going on? You know, I could talk about these reports here. Um, I think that the uh, the reports that uh, we're seeing right now are just the outcome of the Fed rate hikes. And there should be no great shock. These, this was bound to happen. I mean, you take a look at the ADP employment report. That came in better than expected. But the um, initial jobless claims, uh, which came out today, spiked up some. So it was the ADP report that helped drive the market lower uh, yesterday and the jobless claims today, which initially boosted the market up higher because bad news is good news, and ultimately the market succumbed. Tomorrow, non-farm payroll, and we will keep an eye on this data tomorrow morning. Factory orders came in with a beat. 
a big beat. And the market didn't like that. All right, equities, where we are, where 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 are we are? Did I just say that? Uh, where are we in terms of valuation? 28 spot 46, Schiller PE ratio. Even after today's cluster F of a stock market bomb, uh, stocks are still expensive. Taking a look. Talon, hey, brother. Haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? Welcome. We missed you. <laughs> uh, Jeff, hey, brother. Uh, SIVB down another 20%. SIV, that's a bank, too, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Crypto. Do you have crypto exposure, do you know? Yeah, everybody missed Talon, man. Where have you been, Talon? Jesus Christ. We missed you. Okay. Um, let's keep going on here. Uh, Buffett Indicator. Still very expensive, 28% extended. All right, uh, what the F chart of the day? Jobless claims finally rises, layoffs soar at fastest pace since Lehman. Uh, let's not get too nuts here. I mean, okay, uh, no great shock. You know, we we, we we had a spike right before the uh, the COVID bomb. But uh, we're back to being on par with where we were uh, in 2019 and subsequent years prior to 2009. This is not unusual in the historical sense. No, I am not shopping for this dress. I don't know why this is up here, but I have the. Oh, I was shopping on this place. That's why. All right, so job, jobless claims ticking up. So we're beginning to see the, the job cuts hit the economy. And, of course, my state leads the way uh, in jobless claims because our politicians are absolutely the, the biggest disaster. Uh, it's, it's just horrible, horrible. Texas is up there. Connecticut, no great shock. California, absolutely no great shock. So most of these are the red states or blue states. Sorry. I don't know why the, why the uh, conservative states are blue, excuse me, are red and not blue. It should be the red states that are red, like communists. Uh, bank blood bathory sparks widespread risk sell-offs. So this is really the big problem here. Uh, SIVB lost over half of its value. Value uh, SI, which is, uh, what the hell is it called? Silver Lake Bancorp going out of business. But with this comes opportunity. Yeah, Bitcoin took a hit. So what we're going to be looking to do is uh sell premium sell naked calls original initially and then sell puts simple as that and it's not just crypto related we got to get away from this crypto related stuff they're going to blame crypto so they can regulate the hell out of it so they can get rid of it because it's a competitor to the dollar but don't forget credit suisse credit suisse delays annual report this is one of the biggest banks in the world credit suisse delays annual report after sec call Shares plunge towards all-time low. Credit sweep. That must be volatility. It broke support.
We're keeping a very close eye on volatility right now. All right, no follow through on that sale, that push lower. No follow through at all. Bond yields are down. NASDAQ coming off of its low, still down a quarter percentage point. All right, so if you think inflation is going away anytime soon, folks, President Biden unveils $6.9 trillion budget. Uh, I forget how much tax revenue we bring in. It's something like $2 trillion. So that means that he wants to borrow. Let's say I'm being low. Uh, let's say it's $3 trillion. He wants to borrow another $3.9 trillion. So if you think if you think that inflation is going anywhere, you're nuts. If they pass this this budget, uh, inflation is only going up. Horrible, horrible. Uh, you know, I'm going to skip all this. Let's go to the charts. Let's talk about. Uh, the week and how we're poised to close out the week. So we're going to begin with the bond market, and it's very, very critical that we spend a little bit of time here uh, because the bond market is the tail that wags the stock market dog. So if you're not paying attention to the bond market, you are – Missing the bigger picture. And we're going to talk about the yield curve because something happened today that actually this week that is significant. We'll go to that in a minute. So the 10 year yield on the week is now negative after uh, putting in a, a lower high relative to the prior high of 4.33. Uh, we have backed off. Uh, we're just shy of a four-handle. We were above it uh, last week. We flirted with it this week, unable to hold it. The bond price holding support, and it looks as though money may flow into bonds. Now, also, you take a look at the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar on the week is higher as well. So this is kind of bearish for the equity market because what it's telling you is that money is coming out of equities and finding a safe haven in the bond market and in the U.S. dollar. So uh, there is a rotation going on here and it does not benefit the small investor or the retail investor at that. Now, what we want to talk about, hey, Brett, uh, Bob the man, thank you, Brett. Uh, what we want to talk about here is the yield curve. Now, I've been talking about this chart all week on Market Wrap with members. And you remember those members that are on right now. Uh, last night, we were tapping this lower band of support. Now, we opened up a short position on uh, the queues. We're already short of the queues. We need to add more. We're short of Airbnb. Uh, we'll probably add more, assuming that it breaks support on the week. It's down currently below the weekly support level. If it appears poised to close there, we're going to short more Airbnb. We were short of Tesla. We covered that short yesterday. And what else are we short? Anything? I think that's it. So the yield curve is beginning to invert. How do we know that? Well, we go down to a daily chart. And what you're going to see here is a big spike higher on the yield curve. So I'm torn here about what to do. Um, if you take a look at the monthly chart of the yield curve,
we are very, very oversold, due for a steepening, but it may not be this month. It may not be this month. I want to see a weekly close of the yield curve at, at weekly support before I get aggressively short of the market. Now, I could have done it last night, and I could have benefited today, but I didn't, so I'm not going to beat myself up. We already have short positions. We're doing fine there, uh, but we could have added more. But I wanted to see how we close out the week. Do we close at support or do we begin to really uh, – do we begin to rally off the lows? Now, tomorrow's another day. Maybe we'll pull back. I doubt it. Uh, we're going to be watching this very, very closely, folks. And for those that are new here and not familiar exactly with what the yield curve is, the yield curve – is the barometer that we use to tell us, hey, uh, looks like it's time to short the market because it has it has indicated or it the inversion of the yield curve has preceded every single recession going back to 1955. So uh, it's a very, very uh, classic, very, very reliable, uh, indicator for us to use to identify if and when we're in recession. I believe that we've been in recession since Q2 of 2022. Uh, the media will not acknowledge that, but we do. That's the way we trade here. Uh, we're not getting that long of this market. I think that we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a nasty correction here. So we're looking to short. We're looking to short. So beware of the yield curve as it is clearly beginning to be at unsustainable downtrend levels. And equities can rally here. They can rally. That's why I'm not being aggressively short right now. But, man, once we begin to steepen, once we begin to move up, as we did back here, dot-com bubble, as we did here, financial crisis, as we did here during COVID, that means that the Federal Reserve is cutting rates because of something. There's something wrong. There's something very, very wrong with the economy. And today, what did we see with the banks? We saw the bank. This is a weekly chart. Look at this. The banks are down 6.81% on the week versus the S&P 500, which is down 3 spot 1-2%. What's wrong with this picture, J.P. Morgan? Crushed. Who saw this coming? Let's take a look at the daily chart. Crushed. Absolutely crushed. So we're going to be looking to sell premium here. We're going to take advantage of this. Hi, Bob. Do the banks not profit when yields go up? Yes, they do. They're NIM. Net interest margins expand. I'm new to try and tr trying to understand. Thanks. All right. So, yeah, trout fly, what, in, when you have a healthy, um, when you have a healthy economy, yields could rise and equities could rise as well. All their, all the bond market is telling you is that, you know what, uh, the, the economy is getting hotter. We need to get paid a little bit more premium here on our loans. Uh, that's all. That's a growing economy. Uh, so normally you would see in a rising interest rate environment, the banks uh, do very, very well as long as the S&P 500 is doing well. If you have the equity market that is under pressure and yields are rising because the problem is that yields are rising and you have a Federal Reserve that is increasing interest rates and you have bad loans out there, there's a crisis right now in the auto loan market, uh, and now you got crypto. Who knows who's got counterparty risk to uh, Silver Lake and all these other banks that are out there that are getting annihilated. I mean, they're taking J.P. Morgan to the woodshed. If they could take J.P. Morgan to the woodshed, you could easily say more banks go belly up. So uh, right now, it's not about necessarily – uh, rising yields being good for banks. It's a matter of whether or not the economy can withstand the rising yields. 
and what exposure do the banks have to each other? They don't trust each other. More than likely right now, you're, you're probably seeing the Federal Reserve doing swaps overnight so that these banks could remain solvent. They probably don't want to, they don't want to lend to each other right now. And that's when you get credit tightened up. And all of a sudden the Federal Reserve says, all right, now, now we got to be the lender of last resort. We got to, we got to print money. And that's when things get real, real, real fast. So worry about when the Fed pivots. Uh, when the Fed pivots, that's when things are going to go really bad, really quickly. So um, I would not be a buyer of the banks right now, even with the yields rising. You need the rest of the equity market to be rising in a normal, healthy economic environment. Capitalism in the United States right now, I don't want to say is dead. That's hyperbolic. But it certainly is on life support. So uh, be careful. Be careful. It's all about the Fed. And that's not the way it should be. Uh, two year action today was spicy, very much so. Uh, I was thinking about buying some two years. RB, hey, RB. Hi, Bob. We might get a pop tomorrow with favorable numbers. Yeah, but the, the numbers on the non-farm payrolls had better be disappointing to get a nice rally in the equity market. Bad news is good news. It's all they care about right now, RB. Bad news is good news. Uh, looks like volatility has come in here after hours a little bit. Not much. But you're seeing the equity market begin to rally here a little bit. This is Tesla up top. NASDAQ still down slightly. Okay. So... Yeah, the, the numbers need to be uh, weak. You need, I, I, I hate to say it, but uh, if you get weak jobless claims, equities may rally. Swiss franc tumbled, Credit Suisse in trouble. Credit Suisse is going to be nationalized. You can't have a money center bank uh, trading at $2 a share. You can't have it. Uh, Bob, J.P. Morgan is down because of rumors of Jamie Dion's close relationship with Epstein. He is under investigation. Well, I heard that they were uh, required to turn over some documents. Um, I didn't know that Jamie Dimon, you're saying Jamie Dimon himself is under investigation. I hadn't heard that. I know that he's, he's being asked by a judge to turn over documents. So uh, in this chart... I see opportunity and that we're going to be looking to take advantage of it. More, more to come members. Uh, triple Qs. Now, I we, we currently have a short position on in the Qs. And the reason why I didn't add more today is that we are right at weekly support. I can't short into a support level, especially a weekly support level. Because if we rally tomorrow, I'm going to look really, really stupid. So... Uh, I chose not to do that. How do we close out the day? This is a 30-minute chart. Very weak. They tried to rally it. Sellers moved in. We went over the banks. Uh, technology still holding weekly support here. Semiconductors holding weekly support. So while there's a lot of weakness out there, uh, these stocks are not dead yet. LABU biotechs on the week. Wow, this really took it on the chin. Failed breakout, now retracing. We do own some of this. Daily view. This looks like it wants to go lower. Let's check out. Um, 
Let's check out Vol coming in a little bit. You can see volatility breaking down a little bit here. This is only a one-minute chart. Let's pull back. Not much. Still a very strong chart. Consumer staples, very weak, and they are going lower. And this is a safe haven play. Discretionary names crushed. I was going to short these at 155. Missed my chance. Blew that. Daily chart. Wow. Annihilation. Emerging markets, weekly chart. X, this is, I'm sorry, this includes China. So we have a wow, look at this bearish and engulfing bar. Folks, if you're not familiar with the terminology I'm using, there's a link below, five part video tutorial on my top five favorite candlestick patterns. Take advantage of it. So this is an outside reversal bar, also known as a bearish engulfing. Very, very bad price action. Avoid emerging markets, including China. Now, I have an emerging market fund that is ex-China, and that is down on the week as well, but not as bad as EEM, which includes China. Energy. No new weekly lower low. It's an inside week, but it looks as though we're probably going to break here on energy. But for that to happen, you need oil to break down as well. And we don't have that yet. Daily chart. But it looks as though oil may break. This looks like a rounding top. I drew this uh, several days ago. And we've just been consolidating sideways. Let's see, comments. Wow, you guys are typing like crazy tonight. M800 Meta. I better start writing these down. Joel, I'm looking at your comment right now. What do you know about SBNY? What kind of exposure do they have to uh, Silver Lake or any of these other crypto banks? I would like to sell premium there, but I don't know how much exposure they have. I'm writing down a few of these. Zaki, I got yours. No need to repost. All right. It's more about commercial real estate in New York. SBNY is more about commercial real estate than uh, than uh, crypto? It has no exposure. Interesting. Okay. I sold some SQQQ and plan to get some Nugget uh, and VNM. Vietnam. Uh, We're going to go over Nugget. We're going to go over Nugget. I I didn't really look at it that much today. 
VNM, I love. I haven't looked at the chart though. A lot of jobs going to uh, Vietnam. Uh, John Kennedy question Powell. When will this come many jobs? Yeah. Um, Powell doesn't do himself any favors. He should be telling them that they have to cut spending. Simple as that. Uh, they got to cut spending. Uh, there's no way on God's green earth Powell is going to be able to stop inflation without crushing this economy because there's no other way. There's just no other way to fight the inflation than to continue jacking up rates. It's as simple as that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Went down the wrong pipe. Uh. <coughs> okay. Um. All right, so, Joe, this is not – sorry to keep belaboring this because the reason why I ask is that <coughs> – God damn it. That uh, the premiums on – Uh, SBNY are huge, huge. So uh, I'm entertaining opening up a position there. Okay. Food for thought. Let's check out the futures, what's going on here. <clears throat> uh, volatility beginning to spike up again. I know my long puts rocketed. Good for you. Good for you. Congratulations. You know, yeah, I, I, I may, I may sell some naked calls above the highs, or let's see, what kind of, uh, and I'll let the stock get beat up. I'll just go short for a while using uh, naked calls, and then when the shares begin to bottom out, sell some puts. IV percentile, sexy. Uh, everything's good here. We're good to go. You take a look at the April puts. Um, let's go with um, SBNY. Uh, April 153s. So, folks, what we're looking at here are the probability calculators for SBNY, which is a bank under a lot of pressure. The options are very expensive right now. And we like to sell premium in environments like this. We could run through a mock trade here if you'd like to do that. Anybody interested in me doing a, uh, a mock trade? Setting it up? All right, Pedro. Pedro's in. If Pedro's in, I'm in. <clears throat> so what we want to do here, I'm going to roll this over. All right, so I'm going to blow this up. So you remember that we want to sell premium at the call side. The probability calculator is telling us that the probability of, well, touching is being conservative, uh, and I'm generally conservative, let's just say in the money. So we'll go with 126. We'll toy with these numbers a little bit and 54. So what this is is telling us that we have – uh, roughly a 
70% probability of profit on this trade. So let's bring up SBNY. And here are our options. And so what I want to do <clears throat> is sell the open April strike. One twenty six. Not bad. So tomorrow, what I could do is sell the open, say around ten contracts of the call options expiring on April the twenty first, and I could generate a credit of three dollars and thirteen cents. Now, at some point in time, after I put on the short trade, I'm going to want to add a put. We're going to sell to open that, both. And the put we would put down at current, we're just doing a hypothetical right now. Right now, it would be at $54 per share. Go to 55s. So if I open up a, str a straddle, strangle tomorrow, I could generate uh, a credit of $6.05 per contract. So if you do 10 contracts, that's $6,000. So it doesn't mean you're definitely going to make money. It just means that you are being the banker. You have the odds in your favor. Now, if you want to be more conservative, as I would be, I, I kind of manipulate this a little bit. And I would go with the 152 in that neighborhood and 42 strike. That way, the probability of these options expiring worthless are far greater than my prior settings. You can't go any lower than 55 bucks a share. That may change by tomorrow. Uh, so we could generate a credit of $3.60. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, put skew here, skew here uh, because a lot of the risk is to the uh, put side. So more than likely, I'll go to the 125 strike selling premium because the trend is down on the chart. Let's take a look at it. Let's see if there's more downside to be had. And there is. So I may open this trade tomorrow on a counter trend move and we'll sell the calls on strength. It's pretty beaten up. Maybe I will open up both sides. Maybe I'll make this a ratio strangle, uh, meaning I'll sell two puts, excuse me, two calls for every one put. That's what we're doing. I just decided. So that's the shot for tomorrow. Okay. So let's move on. Let me go to comments. If you have any questions about that trade let me know please um joel upstate update sbny still has some exposure to crypto ah okay but they were winding down ahead of the game thank you 
Uh, Tom, need all keep eyes on NLST. Something is going on. What what are they? What what bank or what what do they do? We'll take a look at the chart. Uh, Joel, decreased loan balances by $1.7 billion overreaction today, but I think they will stay down. Okay, so I think there's an opportunity here, and we're going to exploit it a bit. All right. Let's do some chart requests. Oh, you know what? Let's go to gold. Gold, still down below support. Down 20 bucks on the week. It did rally today with the weak uh, initial jobs claims. But still, I can't get excited about this just yet. <clears throat> Nugget still down below 30. Now, the thing to keep in mind, folks, is that if we are in the precipice of a sell-off here, a major one. Uh, everything's going down, including gold, including Nugget, including the gold mining stocks. So please, please be very, very careful with getting too overweight anything right now. And in fact, I want to check out the implied volatility on Nugget to see whether or not we have an options trade here. No, we do not. No, there's nothing sexy here. I want. I would want to sell puts. You can't get any premium, so. No sense in trading it right now. Check out the futures. Uh, a little bit of a rebound here. Uh, Tesla moving off of the lows of the session. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And what is volatility doing? Holding firm. Like a coiled spring. <coughs> Sorry about the coughing, folks. All right. Let's do some chart requests. Oh, Airbnb. Um, of which this is not. Amazon broke today. Airbnb <clears throat> broke weekly support. Now, if they, we're currently short of Airbnb. We closed right at support today. And we broke weekly support. But the week is not over, right? One trading day left to go. A lot can happen here. So <clears throat> we don't want to short more until we know we have a close down weekly support. Rig for Pedro. Okay. Um, folks are going to be using Trend Spider automated technical analysis, 35% discount code below for artificial intelligence in your trading software.
Tesla annihilated this week. <clears throat> okay. Meta. A pretty rough week, but we are currently holding weekly a monthly support. Dash line is monthly support on a weekly chart. That's the beauty of TrendSpot. You can do that. You can take them off. Put them back on. Solid line is weekly support. Dash line is another time frame. So I'm not a seller here. I wouldn't short just yet. Daily view. Uh, daily view again, holding that monthly support level. Uh, if this breaks at 177.98, uh, next stop is 178.17. Uh, now, risk reward perspective, there's not a good, uh, not a lot of risk reward here to short this. And I certainly wouldn't buy it. I would avoid this. S Dow. Looking at this chart, I think we're going to pull back. Uh, we may move up higher, retesting resistance at 29.82. But I think ultimately we're going to pull back down here. And this is going to be the test. Do we hold the breakout? Or do we fail? Let's take a look at it on a weekly time frame. For those not familiar, SDAO is a short of the Dow. It's a short ETF, not for the faint of heart. I believe this one is leveraged. Nice breakout on the week. Very, very nice. So I know your question was, is it too late to buy it? I think you're better off waiting. You're going to get a pullback. The markets are, they took it on the chin really bad these past couple of days. You're going to get a pop at some point in time. And the time to buy s Dow, the time to buy uh, SQQQ, which I'm looking to buy, uh, is on that counter trend rally. Uh, volatility breaking here a little bit. Yields tame. Uh, this is Tesla, which I always track. Perhaps a breakout here. Uh, NASDAQ. They continue to inch off their lows. Higher low. If volatility comes in overnight, you're going to see a rally tomorrow morning. Would I buy that rally? No. No. So as long as volatility pulls back, you're going to see Tesla, you're going to see the NASDAQ move up. But I don't think that it holds. Okay, uh, moving on. SOXS. Right. SOXS. This is the short ETF for uh, the semis. It's looking good. This is a daily chart. Let's check the weekly chart first. What happened to the weekly chart? That's weird. Oh, there we go. I didn't have the logarithmic. I could never say that word. Logarithmic. I'm kind of liking it here. It's beaten up. Right at a resistance level. I mean, man, we break out above resistance. I'm a buyer. Uh, what we could do here is take a look at the premiums. Uh, 
They're okay. I mean, they're not great. They have been higher. But you can get paid some premium here. Yeah, there's some good premiums in here. So selling puts is, an, is, an, is an, an alternative to just buying them outright at this point. So we may be doing that tomorrow. I'm looking for cash flow ideas right now. So this is one that's interesting. Uh, SBNY, JPM. Nugget, not so much, but let's talk about it. Nugget, a lot of pressure, but um, can't buy it yet. Can't buy it yet. We already own some, but I wouldn't go adding more here. And I wouldn't sell premium because you're not going to get paid. Daily chart. It was up earlier in the day, bearish reversal bar, at support. Maybe it rallies, maybe it doesn't. You know, it's just not, it. it's in correction mode right now. So I would avoid it for the moment. VNM, this is a uh, ETF of Vietnam, which I've always been an advocate of ever since uh, the early days of COVID. Now, this did go into a correction. Now, part of my thesis, when we do get the ultimate sell-off, we're going to be looking to uh, buy... Initially, gold stocks, gold, silver. We already own them, but we want to buy a lot more when they're getting pounded down. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, also, we'll be looking to buy emerging markets X china No China. Vietnam looks good. Uh, we own an emerging market fund, X china That's doing less worse than... Uh, emerging markets, but if the dollar, if the Fed pivots, meaning they go to cut rates again, the dollar is going to tank. What benefits when the dollar tanks? Emerging markets, gold, gold stock, silver. Simple as that. Uh, what generally does not do well when the Fed pivots? U.S. equities. That's what that not do well initially, and then at some point they cut enough and spending resumes, and they blow out the balance sheet yet again. And it's off to the races for another couple of trillion dollars. So uh, this is looking interesting. I'm not seeing an opportunity here yet to go buying it. The dollar is still a little bit too strong. Nice rally of late off of the lows, even with the U.S. dollar strong. So VNM's looking okay. It's 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 firming up here, but I'm not ready to go buying it yet. NLST. That list. Uh, this is one where where um, click the wrong button. <clears throat> I'm just going to check back in with the futures market for a second. Okay. All right, so NLST. I don't think this can be bought. I mean, this is, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, this has come way too far, way too fast. I would avoid this like the plague. Weekly uh, chart, you're at resistance. I would avoid this very strongly. I would avoid it. Too overbought. 
I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. So I would avoid it. Rig. We'll leave it off here with rig. Uh, Tom, SBNY. SBNY reminds Lehman Brothers short is fine, but be but very careful. So you're worried about ongoing concerns with SBNY? Do you mind elaborating on that a little bit? I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I, do, I don't know. I really don't know. NVDA. At a video, I wanted a short on strength. I thought it was going to move up higher. It did move up higher, but then it reversed. Where did it close today? Wow, 734. God damn it. Uh, yeah, this is looking uh, toppy. What's the implied volatility here now? Nah, I can't. I can buy the puts. The puts are very cheap. Uh, I just got feedback that JP Morgan is on SBNY's back. Okay. Huh. All right. Hmm. All right. All right, guys. Um, did I miss anybody? Oh, SoFi. We're going to leave it off with SoFi. Uh, yeah, and that's why I may just sell the calls. I'm not too keen on selling puts. And I'll, I'll put a ratio spread on. Maybe I'll put a little bit of insurance underneath the puts if I do put it on and just have some protection on there. Um, this, is a, this is a tough market, and I don't want to put too much risk on. All right, let's uh, take care, Sean. Have a good night, my friend. Uh, SoFi, we're going to leave it off with SoFi. Broken. Avoid it. Avoid SoFi. This is very, very bad. It's going a lot lower. This is a short. Avoid it. Broke weekly support. Folks, have a great night. Don't forget to transpire 35% discount code below. Everybody have an awesome weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Tim, thank you very much for being here, sir. And have a great night yourself.